All right, so let's just add them up as I go. All right? Okay. 6.5 liters. 6.5. V12, right? Yeah. This is a three liter engine, technically, V6. Three liter. Right. Okay. This one is four liters. Four okay. liters. Bigger engine. And then this one, the Zenvo, big boy, 5.8. 5.8. Right. So we're at 19.3 so That's where we're at. Okay. Yeah. And then this, obviously, we know this one. Yeah. 3.5 3. 5 liters. Yeah. Right. And then the final one, the little guy, 1.4. 1.4. Yeah. So 24.2. See? Less than the beast. But what is, I don't understand. What does that prove? Excuse me. Who are you? You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And on Throttle House, sometimes we film new cars, and sometimes we film old cars, and sometimes we film weird cars. And today's car is very much the latter. Yeah. Yeah, this car is pretty much the main reason I dragged the whole team to the UK. Yeah, because underneath all the, the 10 feet of that bonnet. Thank bonnet, you. Thank you. Bonnet, for bonnet. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Is a Spitfire engine. Yes, that Spitfire. <laughs> The plane that was crucial in the British victory over the Germans in the Battle of Britain in World War II. The Spitfire and the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that powered it are held in the hearts of the British people as part of their identity, right alongside fish and chips, Paddington Bear, and their affinity for queuing. The Spitfire was literally a fire-breathing monster that could fly over 360 miles per hour and outmaneuvered the potentially more advanced Messerschmitt 109 with its fancy fuel injection. So naturally, the logical thing to do after the war was to take one of those 27-liter carbureted V12 Rolls-Royce Merlin engines and try to put it in a friggin' car. And that's exactly what a wizard of an engineer named Paul Jameson tried to do. However, the supercharged over a thousand horsepower Merlin engine was perhaps a bit too much. So he used the non-supercharged Meteor version of the engine from a tank. So after fitting the engine to chassis and figuring out the suspension, he realized he needed help with the transmission. That's when he sold the backbone of the creation to a transmission specialist named John Dodd who finalized the creation of the beast. He figured out a gearbox that would work with the massive destructive torque of a tank engine, and then had an English fiberglass company construct a body. A body that included, perhaps mockingly, a Rolls-Royce grill. A fact that Rolls were none too happy about. But before they could say anything, a fire destroyed everything but the chassis. So John Dodd had to rebuild the beast, but this time with a non-supercharged true Spitfire Merlin engine. And more importantly, it was still adorned with a Rolls-Royce grill. So inevitably, accusations of trademark infringements rained down from the lawyers of Rolls-Royce. But carefree, John Dodd continued to give them a hard time whenever possible. Staging public appearances, getting in newspapers, and sometimes going a bit further. In fact, John Dodd would actually call Rolls-Royce and pretend to be a speculative customer. He'd say, I just saw this car in a magazine. It's beautiful. Or I just saw it going down the motorway. I'd like to buy one for myself. How do I get my hands on one? But eventually, Rolls sued and they went to court. So John made a show of parking outside the courthouse every day of the trial which eventually caused his lawyer to fire him just before the very end, saying that John was ridiculing the highest office in the land and gave him one last piece of advice to not turn up to court in the car on the final day or it would very likely be confiscated. Naturally, for that day then, John turned up to the courthouse on a horse. But alas, he did lose and then he refused to pay the fine. So a warrant was put out for his arrest, causing him to flee to Spain with the beast, where he lived out the rest of his life. But now, the beast that John Dodd drove as his main car for years has returned home. The man was a legend, and his legendary car has now been sold by the family to a new caretaker named Martin, who has respectfully taken on the project of restoring the car further 
and has been kind enough to let us experience what is one of the most outrageous creations ever to see a public road. So sit back and join us as we poke around and drive the beast. But as you can see, the new owner doesn't seem to care either because this has a Rolls Royce grill on it. Why does it have a Rolls Royce grill again? Because you, you can't just buy the beast. You have to be worthy of the beast. Oh, I see. And the new owner has taken a leaf out of John Dodd's book and said, yeah. to the Rolls Royce. Yeah, okay. This is honestly one of the most insane vehicles I've ever stood beside. It's so ridiculously proportioned. It just keeps going and going and go. It's like the Lord of the Rings, uh, Turn of the King. Extended edition, just when you think it should end, it doesn't. No, it should never end. Lord of the Rings should never end. Fair enough. And neither should this. Also, Sauron would drive this. Oh, this is a bad guy's car for sure. Yeah, but like, but, but like, like a, a lame bad guy's car, like Sauron. But he's lame? Oh, he's lame. With what? the whole suit and the spiky head. No, no, he, well, he, I think he's lame in the new Lord of the Rings show, but I think he's pretty cool. He's very cartoonish, just like this vehicle. Apparently, he just goes to the pub in this. Sauron? No, no, the new owner. Oh. Who might have a Sauron outfit. Yeah. Anyway. It's just so brilliant to look at. It's just stupid. I love it. How long is the bonnet? Like 10 feet or something ridiculous. I want to lie down. You're going to lie down in front of it? Okay. Yeah, because I'm about nine and a half feet. Okay. Wait, sorry, how long are you? 5'10". Oh yeah, it's just, there's a lot after it. Here you go. If you were this tall, you'd do okay on Tinder. I don't need Tinder anymore. Uh-huh. Anyway, um. so this is a completely bespoke vehicle. Right. That means that there is no other vehicle like this. Well, there's copycats. There's copycats. But this one is, is pride of Britain, isn't it? Yeah, it's British. British, British, British. It's got, where's the, the front axle from? The front and the suspension is from a Westminster. Yes, and then it has obviously the Spitfire engine, and then that's connected to a GM transmission going to a custom rear end and a custom differential in the back, and the whole body has been designed here in Britain and a by a fiberglass air, company. A lot of aero. A lot of aero and some new bits have been added. If you've seen this vehicle before, it was probably yellow in Johnny Smith's late break show. Right. And it had how many? Four more headlights. Yeah, the, the owner is currently in the process of making this look the way he wants it to. Yes. I don't know how much it could ever possibly change. But it's now gray. Side pipe exhaust. Quite cool. Side pipe exhausts are nuts. The interior has been completely reupholstered. It's awesome. We'll get to that in a second. I don't well, know. Where's the utility? What, you, what do you need utility for? It's a giant wagon. That doesn't go that low. You know, I bet you this could tow pretty well. Yeah, well, it, apparently this weighs two and a half tons. Yes. So it's about the same as the new BMW M5. That's right. Um, and it has the fuel economy of, I don't know. Two miles per gallon. Two miles per gallon. That's apparently what it can do. That's pretty good. All right, shall we look at the, the bad boy under the hood? Yeah, let's take a look at it. Oh, I called it a hood. Uh, what's, what's the, what is it like? Five lashes in Market Square? I think extradited back to Canada. Right. All right, pop up. Oh, no, oh my God, lost the cotter pin. We'll deal with that later. Oh, this is really light. Look at this thing here. That's technology as well. That, that is what that is. Look at that. I'm gonna screw that in a little oh bit. Oh my God. Yeah. What's the suitcase for? <laughs> That's the cool and expansion tank that has leather belts on it to hold it in place, but it kind of looks like an old traveling suitcase. It's so it says Merlin quite proudly. Because it is very much a Merlin engine. Right. Minus supercharger. Minus supercharger, and since there's no supercharger, they had to use the pistons from the tank version of this engine. The Meteor. The Meteor, so that it gives it a higher compression ratio because there's no supercharger. So but otherwise, this is a Spitfire engine, no question. And the owner has a spare Merlin engine with a supercharger. As you do. Just sitting around. Yeah. Okay, so, so let me just get this straight. Yes. This is a homemade. Yes. Half tank, half Spitfire engine shoved inside of fiberglass body. That's officially a Rolls Royce coupe on the insurance documents. And our, our, our job is weird. And we're going to drive it. Yeah, our, this is weird. We, no, we're going to drive it. You're going to drive it. I don't want to drive this. Oh, we'll die. Listen, there's a fire extinguisher that is by requisite has been had to been right next to us the whole time. I'm not. You, sh you know what? I'll rock paper scissors you for it. Just, Whoever loses has to drive it. Whoever loses has to drive it. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, ready? Ready? <laughs> yeah, wait. Oh, now you got to do that startup procedure. Will you help me with the startup procedure? I'll hold the piece of paper that's laminated. Okay. All right, key goes in. 
All right. Okay, if we get this Ignition. wrong, we die. That's how it works? Those are the stakes. Good, okay. All right, fan one. Checking. Good. Fan two. Checking. Okay. Now I have to... Switch the fuel pump fuel switches. Fuel pump on. switches. All right, checking pressure. All right, we got both there. So, okay, so fuel pumps on. Prime. Six seconds. Magneto switches up. Magneto's on. Okay. All right, and press starter motor button. Come on. Sounds like someone's having a fight in there. But alas, the beast doesn't answer to just anyone, and even though Thomas did everything right, just like in the sword in the stone, the vehicle deemed him not worthy. Enter the owner and rightful heir to the beast. successfully started, the owner decided to clear the pipes, so to speak, and drove it a few hundred yards to the nearby pub just to make sure everything was working, and then chucked Thomas the keys, which, much to the joy of the people around, or most of them, meant starting it up again.
The heads is leaking a bit onto the exhaust manifold. Stop and go traffic is not really what I had in mind today. This is not the best. Oh, a little backfire there. It's strange because in the engine bay there's a piece of cardboard being used as an isolator. Oh yeah, that's that's a good yeah. And good. then this whole thing is trimmed with Alcantara. Right. So it just feels like we're in one big flammable Spitfire engine explosive explosive thing. What are the chances we still? I don't I don't I just don't want to catch on fire. Look how stressed he is. I'm extremely Look stressed. How stressed he is. You need to get better at rock, paper, scissors, mate. Yeah, I'm really yeah, I was good for a while, but What's a racket? What a racket! What must we look like on the road? Insane people. Insane people. That's what we look like. How do you make the spirit of ecstasy go up and down? Imagine driving this every day. John Dodd drove it as far as Sweden and back, and apparently exceeded 200 miles per hour in it on many occasions on continental roads. Meanwhile, we're going like 30 miles an hour. Look at Thomas's face. Ah, that's so scary. and exhausted, Thomas actually managed to get us back to home base. Well, within a couple of feet. And we're stoked. We're 
restored at the very restored end. Restored at the very end. Oh, that's what you sound like. Yeah. Pump, fan, pumps off. Mags off. Mags off. It's it stalled literally as I rolled in here. Should we get the fire extinguisher? I think we made it, mate. I think we're still alive. You thought that England was just this boring place full of mediocre food. <laughs> John Dodd, you're a psychopath, and so is the new owner. Have you ever driven anything like that? <laughs> a million years, man. And assuming our hearing comes back, it might not have to be another million years before we try something as absurd as this again. The beast is every bit worthy of the name, and a huge thank you to the owner Martin for allowing us to feature it. Apparently, it's going to make its way over to North America in the near future, is the rumour. In which case, who'd have thought that England would be showing the United States how displacement is done? As long as it comes with earplugs, we're all for it. As for the rest of our UK adventures, well, exciting videos are on the way. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.